Nikola Tesla died on January 7th, 1943, in the Hotel New Yorker in Manhattan at the time. He was in room 3327. He was on the 33rd floor. Interesting, isn't it? Immediately after Tesla's death, Tesla scientific papers vanished from his hotel room in the Hotel New Yorker. Tesla papers were never found. Tesla papers contained scientific data and information about death rays, which could be used for military purposes. In 1947, the military intelligence service identified the writings about the particle beam contained in the Tesla's scientific papers as extremely important. Military intelligence services of the USA, Germany, and the USSR were vitally interested in Tesla's death rays. The current beam weapon program is probably what he was working on. He was also working on energy, free energy, lots of things from Nikola Tesla. He died, and he took it all with him. Or did he? In a moment, our guest will be Mark DeMuha as we talk about the life of Nikola Tesla. <laughs> Mark DeMuha is the son of a Los Angeles Police Department narcotics detective. This aided in his early interest in the science of investigation. Mark has been a religious educator, missionary, and student of theology, and he joined the military, and due to an injury, his career came to an abrupt end. He then had the opportunity to attend college on the GI Bill and took some film classes. It was at this time that he and a lifetime friend decided to pool their efforts and resources together and begin the journey of writing the feature-length film, The Tesla Conspiracy. Over the last three years, the combination of Mr. DeMuha's investigative skills and Mr. Finley's research and analysis skills have resulted in the discovery of what they believe to be a far-reaching conspiracy to suppress free and clean energy technologies. Mark DeMuha is currently in the final phase of his film production education as a member of the Cinema and Television Arts Department at California State University in Northridge. He's our guest on Coast to Coast AM. Hey, Mark, how are you? I'm pretty good, George. How are you tonight? Good. You have at least decided to research and film a most fascinating individual, have you not? Possibly one of the most interesting people of the last two centuries. Beyond just what I read about his death in 1943, Mark, tell us about Mr. Tesla. Well, Nikola Tesla was an interesting character, aside from all the things that he did in the world of science and engineering. Going back into his earlier life, we discovered that uh, he developed kind of a neurotic personality, I guess you could say. <laughs> like all of us, right? He him a little more so. And I think it's particularly relevant or related to the fact that he felt responsible for his brother's death. Oh, really? Now, how'd that happen? His brother, his older brother, at the age of 12, was given permission or the right to ride a horse that their family owned. And Nicola was jealous of his brothers being able to ride. And uh, p playing a childish prank, he uh, shot uh, a rock or a, a pea at his brother's horse oh. from a pea shooter, which resulted in his brother being bucked off the horse and breaking his back, which later led to his oh. death. So he had, to, he had to live with that all his life. And And... When you look at his life, it's kind of indicative, you know, he was a rather obsessive, compulsive person, specifically in the areas of numbers. He was a completely obsessed with the number three or any derivative of there, specifically the number 27, which is, of course, the cube of three. Well, that's kind of funny, too, because the room was 3327 that he was in. I guess he picked that on purpose. One would suspect. Yeah. It seems to fall in line with the patterns that he followed throughout his life. Okay. Then, uh, that's an aspect of his life, Mark, I was not aware of, this obsession, this compulsion with numbers and what they all meant. Well, it, and it's a, his obsessive, compulsive nature extended to other parts of his life. He was very fearful of human contact. And uh, quite often he would refuse to shake people's hands and, and blame it on an injury that he had gotten in the lab. Was he a germaphobic type guy, or he just didn't want to, you know, deal with people? Initially, I don't think it was a germophobia situation, but later on in his life, he started just demonstrating some of those germ paranoia symptoms. Like, like, like Howard Hughes? Yeah, he tended to wash his hands excessively. He really had a problem with human hair. 
for some reason, and <sighs> nothing has ever been written about it. Or He was not a very open person. No. He had a particular aversion to human hair, especially women's hair. He just didn't want to be around it? We, we, we really don't know. We just know that he had mentioned to some of the people that were closer to him in his inner circle, and he specifically, you know, mentioned or made it known fact that he was avert, aversive to human hair. All right. Now, he was about 87 when he died, right? Right around there? Yeah. So he lived a long, long life, born in, uh, where was it, Austria-Hungary at the time, in that area? Well, the political divide at the time was Austria-Hungary. That was the political schism that he was born under, but it was either the town of Lika or the town of Smiljan uh -huh. in what is now Croatia. Okay. So he was Serbian. I guess you would call him Serbian today, right? Well, he is, he is, he is, list, well, he is documented as being the son of Serbian. Okay. His father was a Serbian Orthodox minister, and his mother was a housewife, but rather an inventor herself. Well, when did he, Mark, start dabbling, uh, do we know, uh, in, in, you know, the, the um, electrical, the magnetics? When, when did he start playing around like that as a scientist? Well, as a scientist, it really didn't start until he attended university. And it had been his goal or his dream from an earlier point in his childhood to go to school, but his father had wanted him to follow in his footsteps and go into the ministry of the Orthodox Church. And he had a really bad bout with cholera between the ages of 16 and 17, and he kind of conned his father into, Dad, if I survive, can I go to university? So it was I, one of those, Dad, I'm dying, please, if I make it through this and, you know, whatever. I don't think yeah. his father expected him to make it, honestly. Really? Okay. From what I've read and from what I've seen, it was kind of one of those deathbed things where, yeah, sure, son, you can go to school. And then he got better. Well, when did they come here to the United States? Well, Nikola Tesla, the funny thing is the what brought him to America ended up being what was his demise. He originally graduated from the, uh, the electrical and mechanical engineering program that was offered at the uh, school in Graz. It was the Polytechnic School in Graz. Okay. And uh, when he left school, he initially traveled Europe between Paris and Germany, working um, on direct current generators, trying to make a living. And then he ended up coming up with an idea for an alternating current motor. Was he well known there at the time? Well, he was, he was when you say well known, I don't necessarily know that he had any type of celebrity status, but he was known amongst the inner circle of people that worked in electrical engineering. And I guess they respected him. Well, he was respected enough that they continually were able to find him work. All right. And then while he was in Budapest, he had, um, I guess you could say, an epiphany. And the way he described it in his autobiography, he specifically said it came to him like a flash. And he scratched out a design in the sand before him, and then he memorized it in his head. What was the uh, design of? It was the design of the first alternating current motor. He, he just, it just came to him like that in a like flash? A, these flash experiences had plagued him as a younger man, and he always viewed them as a curse. Even though some of these flash experiences had, had the opportunity to save him when he was a younger man, he'd always worked really hard to kind of push them out of his psyche. But this moment, this, this flash came to him, and he realized that he had something that was revolutionary. No doubt the guy was a genius, Mark, right? Well, beyond anything that most of us can comprehend. I mean, the, his very thought processes are baffling to most people, even that of people with scientific training. I mean, he has, a lot of people might not know this, more than 700 patents. And he may have been related to a total of 1,200. My gosh, I mean, these are, these are some of the things I just know about, and then I want you to jump in and tell me what are the big home runs maybe in this list. The well, telephone repeater, right? The rotating magnetic field principle, the yeah. alternating current system, induction motor. The induction motor is probably... Of all the things he did, probably had the greatest ramification on humankind. All right, we'll talk about that. The Tesla coil transformer. Second most important thing, Tesla coil. Wireless communications, radio, fluorescent lights, and then a, a list of other things. But you think the induction motor was his home run? Well, I say home run when it comes to the relevance to the rest of us on the planet Earth. Because if you consider at this time, 80% of the planet runs on alternating current. True. There are very few places you can go now where you have to bring a DC adapter when you travel. Without Tesla, Edison wouldn't have done what he did, right? Actually, when 
Tesla came to the United States at the age of 28, and I, it was around 1880. I'm sorry, 84. Okay. He came with the intention of coming in t to meet Edison. He really kind of uh, 